Both of my parents were born in a tiny medieval hilltop village in central Italy called Limosano. The town was said to have been erected around 1000 AD and was built around a Lombard castle. It's a magical place and always has been for me ever since I was a girl. Limosano was once booming with inhabitants, but the absence of work and dreams of a more lucrative life inspired many people from south and central Italy to travel to far off lands and start fresh. My parents both came over by boat in the 1960s, my father via Ellis Island and my mother via Pier 21 in Halifax. Last summer was our first voyage back to the town together as a family, to meet our ghosts, to join our parents in walking the streets they once inhabited as children. The stories we had been hearing about for years finally came to life. This used to be a, a pedestrian like, uh, pathway, you know? We used to rent this land, and, and when they first built that building there, that, that used to be a, looking like a mansion back in those days. This is Via Borgo. Hey, Hey! 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 Benvenuti in Italia, porca miseria! I always feel like I'm entering a storybook when I visit my parents' hometown. The story of a bygone era, though. It's a town almost frozen in time. And I've always been a fan of time travel. The disco. The piazza, or town square, is a place where you can always find a familiar face, even if it's been almost 50 years since you've seen that face. There's something about the old cobblestone roads and ornate door knockers. Just simple things, but made to be so beautiful. Walking around town is like being in a museum or on a movie set. My father was older when he left town, so he showed us around. Sì, qua sopra c'è una caverna che quando ero bambino, eh, qualche giorno facevo il cattivo, non andavo a scuola. Mi andavo a nascondere lì, io e i miei compagni. Mamma, aspetta. This was the house where Papa was born. It's not every day that you get to see the place where you first entered this world, especially if that place is all the way across the ocean. Just like this? Oh, wow. <coughs> oh, this, is so this was the stable. Hmm. That's where I used to put the donkeys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is the room I was born in. <laughs> where were you born, Dad? On the floor? Okay, on the floor. What if it was a goat? <laughs> we need your guidance. Get up here. The <laughs> scar is on the come come Oh my goodness. Fifty five years ago. No, there's no electricity. But obviously people live to death. Is this exactly as it was when you lived here? This 
this was not no 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 Dad, was this your bed? Yeah, actually, this, this was the, uh, <coughs> when you came up the stairs, this used to be a hallway over to that window, and, and the entrance to that room now used to be here. Uh -huh. And my bed was on, on the opposite side of this wall. Ecco, questa era la camera mia, da ragazzo. Where are we going? To your house. Which house? That's where mom was born. Go to the front of the door. Huh? Mom was born of uh, one of those two balconies. I'm not sure which. So somebody lives there. At one time, this was dirt. There was only cement like this. And when I used to come from our house, you know, there's a non and non. No. This is the road I used to take. And people used to shit all that fresh. And this corner here it was like a minefield. You know how many times <laughs> I, I slept on the crap and the... So this is what the toilet was. There was only outdoor toilet. Here and, and all that land, I told you, on the other side of the house. Yeah. Like people just went out in public to go to the bathroom. Men and women, they used to uh, kneel down beside one another and crap. Like right here. I guess things were done differently in small towns. Wow. Pomegranates. Look, Matthew. Hey, Andrew. Look at the pomegranate. Who goes on down down? Buona volta, see? Arricchia anni fa. We used to go house to house, to, and everybody would offer a piece of wood. We used to pile it over here. Set it on fire. Yeah. I could just get carried away and lost in every nook and cranny that that town has to offer. So much mystery, so many questions unanswered. And our elders, well, many of them are not around any longer to share the stories. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Zia Maria is my grandmother's oldest sister. <laughs> and like most of our elders, she speaks in a very thick town dialect. <laughs> See the, see the water? They used to come and get water to drink here for a long time. Wow. Look, the water is pretty clear. It's, uh, it's right now, it's pretty dry. Wow. Uh, spring comes out of there. My bees nonna, or great grandmother, who I had the pleasure of knowing before she passed, used to live right through this archway. This was always my favorite part of town, but these days hardly anybody lives up there because of all the damage done by the earthquakes. It's so wild up this way, the most beautiful ancient homes completely destroyed and left unfixed and forgotten. And nature, of course, has found a way to take over once again. 
There are trees and vines growing inside the homes where families once shared meals together, branches emerging from empty windows. The views from the top of town are spectacular, with the red clay rooftops and rolling hills. You could see for miles in every direction. But I couldn't help be filled with both sadness and awe while we explored more deeply into the wasteland of the abandoned homes at the top of town where people were forced to flee and relocate because of natural disaster and poverty. These rooms had once been filled with love and laughter, with la miseria, talks of war and peace and God and poverty, the smell of homemade meals and coffee, the sound of babies being born and widows mourning their lost ones. And now they were just rooms, crumbled stone, tattered wallpaper, broken furniture, remnants of clothing and memorabilia, pages from old books, photographs from the past. In every single home, I wondered who lived there. Were they a relative of mine? Did they die a tragic death or... Are they maybe somewhere alive and well and just living in the lower end of town these days where it's safer? And then there was Nessuno. That's what he calls himself anyways. It literally translates to nobody in Italian. Most likely a reference to Homer's Odyssey or the 1973 Spaghetti Western directed by Tonino Valeri. I met him a few years before this and he's the only one that lives at the top of town. E come ti chiami tu? Nessuno? Sì, bravissimo. Sì, ci siamo conosciuti già. Due anni fa io e te. Grazie. Come stai? Tutto bene. Eh. Che mi racconti di bello? Eh niente, fa adesso stiamo facendo una passeggiata sul paese. Ma che non si passa più, eh? E perché? Perché è pericoloso. Yeah, ma la l'altra chiesa, Rosa, Poss come possiamo arrivare lì? Sta chiuso. I wish I could go back in time and visit these homes before they were in pieces and the families that lived here. All that's left now are these remnants and maybe a few ghosts. There is a quiet up here though, a calm, a peacefulness. I love it. I wonder if my grandmothers played here as young girls, even though I'm certain they didn't do much playing with all the farm work they had. Or maybe the town doctor lived up here. Did they even have a doctor? I don't know. I do know that my paternal great-grandfather was a sort of doctor, if you'd like to call him that, healing people with potions and herbs and chants from an old book he got given by a clergyman during the war. I wish I knew more about all of that stuff, and I'm sure some of the answers lie within these broken walls. It was time to say goodbye to the abandoned beauty and head back into town. Zio Michele was my grandfather's youngest brother and has departed from this world since the taping of this video. Wow. 
tipo di vino fai qui? Rosso, no? Rosso, rosso. Ma come si chiama? Come si chiamano le uva? La dentiglia. Ah, dentiglia. La dentiglia è oh. molto noto nel mondo di Sicilia. Questo è il vino che abbiamo in questa zona. Questo è il posto di riposo di nonno Angelo e nonna Marianna. May they rest in peace. So many people I wish I would have known. Buongiorno. <laughs> Hello, my name is Joe Ramelow. I was born in this beautiful town you see behind me called Limosano in the province of Campo Basso. I am so proud to have come back with my whole family after many years. Where are the tears, Dad? Show us the tears. <laughs> Show us the tears. <laughs> I would like to say hello to everyone. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. <laughs> Summers are always the best in Italy. So many of us return to see our relatives and the sleepy little towns come back to life. Mari, 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 no me fa l'amore, e me fa l'amore senza la camicia. Quando è bella, è la camicia, e non c'è più bella, no, no, no. Buonasera, mi chiamo Peppe Ramolo. <laughs> One night in the summer, we were working on a piece of land away from the farmhouse, and on the way back, it started a storm. We got back to the farmhouse and we went straight to bed. We were soaked, soaking wet, and it was colder. Because every night before that, Nonno used to walk around the farmhouse with a lantern when it got dark. Why? So, but well, people that were intending to, to steal knew that there were people sleeping there at night, so they weren't going to come. Okay. So this night, because it was raining, Nonno didn't do that. So the thieves thought, thought that we were there. not there. Okay. Was this the first time you had thieves at your place? No. Our place got broken down three or four times. It was right, it's right beside the road, you know, very simple. Okay. Then they steal, they put the car, in, they don't even turn the engine on. They put it in neutral and it goes all the way down to the river. Then they turn on the, the engine. So it was about 2.30 in the morning, Nonna uh, heard a thump on the window, the upstairs window. So she got up and saw two guys, you know, putting a, a long piece of wood from the ground, you know, against the wall to the window. So they were gonna, they were gonna come in, they climb and come in. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Nana got scared. I was asleep, I was a kid. See, Mary, I don't think was born yet. And uh, Nana was sleeping. So Nana said, uh, you know, Ijai, a kapalashku poi, you know, get a, get a gun, get the gun. And you had a gun? What gun? It was the, the poker. Yeah, the thing you blow uh, the fire. So Nonna, Nonna, Nonna went to get the thing in the fireplace and with this thing, you know, anyway, they, they did leave. I thought it was a, a, the barrel of a gun, you know, it was the blower for the fireplace. And, and they saw that when they reached the bridge right on the river, that's when they turned the engine on the fire and they went away. 
But the first time I remember they, them robbing, they came down through the chimney. What? And one of the person was too big, maybe. Santa Claus. <laughs> Explode, uh, broke down the chimney. Broke down the chimney. <laughs> so they stole, uh, what, what were they going to steal? Chickens, rabbits, you know, small stuff. I mean, we, we didn't have gold to her money. But that's, that was happening very frequent. That's why we had the dog. What was his name? Brick. Yeah. Brick. <laughs> We were lucky to be there during one of the busiest weeks in August, the week of many feasts and celebrations. During the feasts of San Donato and Santa Filomena, the entire town follows the clergy and the musicians through the winding streets, and people take turns carrying the saint statues. Then we drink and dance in the town square until the wee hours of the morning, refreshing ourselves with some gelato and the summer breeze. The day after the festas, my parents took us to this place they like to call Colle Misere, which translates to Miserable Hill, which is not a very fitting name for this rich and plentiful land that my family used to work. An eight-year-old, you know, short legs. How long <laughs> it would take me to, to walk from there to here? Yeah, a couple of hours. But exactly. what else were you doing? I mean, what is <laughs> So, you know, you, you thought, you know, uh, this guy's telling me bullshit again. <laughs> Dad, that's not appropriate language for the documentary. <laughs> So did I. Come sono belli, guarda, guarda. Deliciosi. Lo portiamo a casa, si lavano, si mettono nel frigorifero, nel congelatore, e come sono buoni, con un po' di gelato dopo. Are you thirsty? Dan, yeah. you want to drink that? No. Let's see what it looks like. No, it's the pill that's uh, discolored. Actually, the water is not bad. Wait, watch out. Watch, watch, watch. watch. The, the chain is going to go down. Wait. Watch. Listen. Dad, where's your land? Right here. Behind these trees? It's not behind where the trees are, in the bush. It's all uh, this is like a, a small lot for, uh, for a small house to build on. It's not growing like bamboo here. Things growing on their own. Actually, this is you know, some of the uh, vineyards that are still here. Uh, we, we, mom, and, mom and Nonno planted. What year did they plant it in? Uh, this would have been in 1960, uh, 61, 62, in that area. And this is the vineyard down here, Dad? Yep. Let's go check it out. <clears throat> I could picture my grandparents as a young, hard-working couple, their skin sun-kissed and dry from working outside all day. My grandmother picking her vegetables and making dinner for the family. I left that place promising myself that one day I would return. I 
I used to have bad teeth as a child, and you know, we, there was no dentist. And even if there was, you don't go and get a you know filling or. So I used to walk all the way from there with a bad tooth from the town. I get here, you know, the pain was unbearable. So there's a type of a uh, grass. You break a branch and uh, it's like a milky liquid. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. put a couple drops, yeah. you know, in the cavity. It numbs the pain. Matter of five minutes, you know, it numbs the pain. Wow. Yeah. And where's that grass? Well, I, I... Where, can I, where can I buy this in Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> And the festivities continued. le chiamavamo lo squannalietto durante l'inverno che era freddo mettevamo sotto le lenzuola le coperte con una coppa di, di uh, carboni accesi e riscaldava il letto prima di, di andare a dormire guarda che invenzione <laughs> during the festas young musicians schooled in the traditional folk repertoire sing all night long It was an amazing thing to witness my parents reconnect with their homeland especially my father, who has such vivid memories of this special little town. I got to see a side of my parents that I've never seen before as they connected with their homeland. It was beautiful to watch, so beautiful. And it's so important to know and understand where we come from because it's in our blood, it's in our bones, it's in the fibers of our being. It makes us who we are. We all come from a place, and this is our place, and it's my favorite place. I feel lucky to have roots here, and I will always have a special place in my heart for Limosano. Happy Italian Heritage Month, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>